Good afternoon and welcome to the Center for Transportation Studies uh, Friday Seminar. I'm Rob Bertini. I'm a faculty member in uh, Civil Engineering and Urban Planning and along with Jennifer Dill, who's a faculty member in Urban Planning. We organize this seminar series and we're pleased today to welcome one of our own. Um, we hope that this, in the future this seminar series will have more of our students presenting uh, their research results and so today we have Suti Tantiano Gulchai, who is presenting his master's thesis work. He received his master's of science in civil and environmental engineering in March. And now he's working at DKS Associates, just a few blocks away from here. And he's going to be talking about the project that he developed uh, to examine the use of transit buses as probes for arterial performance measures. And I should add that Suti was my third graduate student, so uh, I'll probably never forget uh, the first few. Um, well, I won't forget any of them. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, so speaking of the research right here, it first start as a class project, and then it extend to over a lot of study, so it become my thesis. So pretty much um, we were looking at the bus that run along the arterials and whether it can report the traffic. So the topic today is uh, transit bus as the arterial traffic probes, uh, empirical evaluation using geolocation data. So, what we're going to go through today is um, we probably start with objective and the motivation of the research. And then I introduce you to the bus and the test vehicle data. We um, start with a um, test scenario that we have and then look at the study corridor and the bridge portion, which is the rush iron bridge. And then we go through all the statistic, statistical analysis to make the research look better, and we come to the conclusions. So the ob objective of the study is to introduce you to the automatic vehicle location data, and then we examine the possibility of using a transit data as a probe vehicles, and demonstrate how the uh, AVL data can be used to report the traffic conditions, and Later, we can create an application that can predict or guesstimate the traffic condition using the bus data. So, speaking of the freeway performance measures, this area is kind of like well known. A lot of research has done toward the assessment of the freeway system. But when we speak of the arterial system, uh, not so many research going on on the arterials. But when we look at the lane mile percentage that the arterials contribute to the roadway system in the U.S., we found that uh, arterials contribute like four times more than the freeways. So that's a kind of like a gray area that we probably want to target, that we want to focus more on the arterials because it contributes more. And when we look at the vehicle mile travels, we can see that arterials uh, People spend a lot of time driving on the arterial more than freeway or the other systems. And another motivation for the research is the higher demand for the travelers toward the advanced traffic management system and advanced travel information system that travel want to know information about traffic on the arterial mall. And that's something that we are missing. So speaking of the the travel time study that we used to 
um, do analyze the arterial conditions. Uh, pretty much, we send a lot of people to gather the travel time data. It spend a lot of time, a lot of money, and spend a lot of people to gather a small set of data, which is not useful and not. We didn't use the budget wisely, and so with the innovation of the technology, we have a pro vehicles that can go out and collect data in the real time. We expand the coverage of the study areas, we can get more data, and then use less people to collect that real-time data. And what happened is we are lucky that we are in Portland, that all the buses equipped with a GPS that can act as a probe. So we have a better resource, but whether that information can reflect something for the, for the researchers or for the agency standpoint, we gonna take a look into that. So this picture is a screenshot from the traffic management centers where uh, represent the freeway system in Portland areas. You can see that the color scheme represents the speed or uh, the roadway condition on the freeway system. But what we with, we are missing here is the, the traffic condition on the arterials. People want to know more about arterials, and that's the motivation that we try to generate the same thing as a freeway. So if we can generate that color scheme, represent the speed on the arterial, that probably will be useful for the travelers. So throughout the whole research that going on these areas, many of research happen on the freeway using loop detectors static equipment to generate the performance measures. And then later on, we have a lot more research going on on the travel, travel time study on the arterials. And then when the innovation of the technology comes, we have a lot of research going on, on the pro, using the probe vehicle for the arterials. But when we look at the transit bus as a probe vehicle, there are just a few research on that area. That's why it encouraged us to look into that more than the freeways. So we start with the experimental, experimental design, try to answer the questions like, can bus report the traffic conditions? So if yes, we have a decide that there are the relationship between the bus and the traffic conditions. So in order to prove the hypothesis that we have, we need a data set. First, the bus data, and another set of data that represent the traffic condition that we can make a comparison between those. And these two data need to be at the same time at the same location, so we can rely on that. So what we gonna compare? We look into the key performance measure like travel times and speed. These two is the main uh, performance measures that we can use to generate the other key performance like delay, um, fuel, um, like emissions, those kind of things. So we start with the study corridor. We establish the study corridor which we use power blowers between downtown Portland to the 39th Avenue on the, on the east side. The corridor runs three miles. It's a four-lane arterials run east-west across the Los Island Beach. Have every daily traffic of like 50,000. So we have two data sets. One is a bus dispatch system data from TriMet and another one is a test vehicle data. We're gonna go into the bus data first. So the bus data that we use are run along power below what we use bus route nine, have about 14 miles, 15 miles long, and then have like a 80 scheduled trip per direction per day. Uh, the mean scheduled travel times is the mean scheduled headway is 
1.2 minute and the mean scale of travel time is about 49 minutes. Crossing Lost Island Beach and that Lost Island Beach is important. I'm going to speak about that later. So what is the bus dispatch system? It's a system that equipped on the TriMet bus com uh, comprised with three main components. First it's a GPS system that can get the real-time location for the bus and then we have the uh, real uh, communication system that the bus driver can communicate with the control center and then the third one is an uh, archive system that uh, generate all the, uh, collect all the data and then dump it to the, the garage dump, dump the data to the system at the garage at the end of the days. So what is the archive data? That's going to be the most important part that we're going to use for the study. The most important part on the archive data is the stop circle data. So it's the activity that happened at the stop location of the bus. So what we have is when the bus arrive at the stop location, the bus have uh, location of the uh, of the stop uh, installed in that system. So when it come in within the range of uh, 100 feet, the bus record the times that it come, and we call it a lifetime. And when the the bus are no longer within that range, it record another time called leave time. So that's the the two times that we're gonna use to estimate the relationship. And then more than that, we have the wait time, which is the period of time that the bus serves passengers. So it's the time when the door open and the door close. And we're going to go into that. Example of the bus data. There's a data set of the bus data. It has several things like number of passengers, the leave time, a lifetime, time, uh, the wait time, period of time that the door open and close. Um, it records the uh, location in the XY coordinate and the most important thing is the maximum speed times which is the maximum speed achieved from the previous link when the bus travel from the first to the second stop it record the maximum speed that it can achieve on that and that's going to be the useful number but we're going to go into that later so route 9 analysis we look at the portion of the route number nine, which is the same, uh, the same distance with the study corridors, and the the mean travel time is about ten minutes. Um, have thirteen stop on the eastbound direction and have twelve stop on the westbound directions, and it okay include the Lost Iron Bridge. We have four day of data on in November 2001 so two gonna be on the weekday which is a peak morning period morning peak period and then we have two days on the weekends on the Saturday so we do the first analyze analysis on the, the wait time and the passenger activity at the stop and then we have about 15 runs on both directions for the for the week Days and then about 10 run for the weekends. So the first tool that we use to look at the behavior of the, the vehicles, we use the uh, vehicle trajectories, which is the plot between the cumulative distance versus the time of the vehicle at the location. So you can see that the x axis is a, is a time period and the y-axis, the uh, primary y-axis is the distance in my and the secondary y-axis that you can see the number right there is a stop locations along the corridors. So if you want to know more about the behavior of the vehicles, trajectory is the right tool to do, to use to look at the behavior of all the vehicles because we can derive several dip different things from the trajectory, like speed of the vehicle, which is the slope of the line. We can do the headway, which is a different on the horizontal distance. 
between two lines, we can get the travel time from the trajectories. That's probably the most important thing. And you can see that um, the horizontal bar right there is what happened at the stop location is the time that the bus spent at the stop. So test vehicle. So we collect the test vehicle data by torture our students, send them out, probably 12, 12 people in two vehicles um, each day, running back and forth. Um, the vehicle equipped with the GPS receiver, um, and they have 10, 10 minute headway because we try to use the same headway as a bus. And they were instructed to drive as a standard pro. That's the most important thing because you don't want them to run 60 miles per hour on the corridor and then you screw up the data. So what is the data look like? We have the location in the lab, which is the longitude. Every three second time stamps. So we have the data at the same day, the same period as the bus that we have available. So it's going to be two weeks day and two weekends. And we can calculate the distance between those two uh, locations using the equation you can find on the web really easy. So first, we look at the location of the vehicles along the corridors. You can see that the small yellow dot is the vehicle location at particular times along the corridor. And that color scheme is the speed of the vehicles. So we have about 15 runs available on the weekday. And then with the, with the air with, of the satellite, we lost a lot of data on the weekend. So we're going to focus more on the weekdays, which is a morning peak period. That's probably more important. Note that um, the vehicle location over time plot right here show that the test vehicle data is the um, time-based data that we get the location at particular times. But the bus data is a location-based data set that we have information at the specific location of the stop. So these two are different, but we try to compare them and maybe estimate the relationship on those. So we look at the trajectory of the vehicles. As you can see, you can see the behavior of the test vehicle. That, Like that inset, you can see that the vehicle accelerates and then decelerates and accelerates. So this replicate the stop and go condition on the arterials. So first, in order to establish the relationship, we look at how important, how, how good the bus and the vehicles can com make a comparison. So we generate what we call the three-dimensional speed contour by taking out the speed on the corridor, stretch it out, as a, step, a straight line. And with the more number of vehicles that we have, we add them up to create a bigger layer of uh, distance and t over time. And you can see the color represent the speed from this. So we can make a, a better comparison in the graphic mode. So you can see that upper layer, that's the speed over the corridor, over time of the vehicles. So the speed plot in the C axis. And then we have the second layer, which is actual bus. So if we want to generate the relationship between these two, we want to know that the difference between the speed should be steady. And if it's steady, the diff by subtract the first layer, with the second layer, we get we support to get the plain uh, la layers. That means the the different are steady and the same throughout the corridors. But what we have exactly, you can see that the layer start have have variation between the difference of the two layers. So that indicate that 
between the bus and the test vehicle, it might not be the best to generate the relationship. So we come up with three more conceptual bus. So first is the hypothetical bus that we call um, by generate the bus that running without stop. Try to make the bus running like a vehicle. And then uh, another one is a pseudo bus which is the bus running with the maximum achieved speed from the previous thing. So we generate the um, concept show bus on the maximum speed. And then what if we add the passenger activity to that maximum speed bus? So we generate another one called modified pseudo bus. So picture word, a thousand word. We're going to show it. So that the trajectory of the regular bus you can see that the horizontal distance that what happened at the stop circle, at the stop location. So if we take the stop time out and tip the line over to connect to be the, another trajectory, that will be the hypothetical bus without the stop times. And then pseudo bus running with the, mac, the maximum speed. You can see that the slope of the line are higher than the, the other two. And then what if we add the dwell time, which is that horizontal, p, uh, horizontal distance into that pseudo bus. So that become a modified pseudo bus. It's a bus running faster, but still have more, uh, some activity at the stop. So what would be the best one to make a comparison between those two? So this one shows all the four buses in a comparison, you can see that the little bus run the f is the fastest one over the four. And then the modified pseudo bus, the hypothetical, and the bus, the actual bus. So we add another line to make a comparison, which is the red right, right there, is the test vehicle. So as you can see here, seem like the test vehicle are landing pretty close to the pseudo bus. And that's become our, our analysis that we probably can compare the pseudo bus with the test vehicles. So to be sure about that, we look at the, another picture to make a comparison. So we spread it out, all four buses, with the test vehicle in red. So first we compare the test vehicle to the bus. You can see that the gap between those two are the different in the travel times that those two vehicles have. So it looks like the bus is not going to be the best to make a comparison. So how about the hypothetical bus? You can still see that there's a gap between them, so that's not a good one. How about the modified pseudo bus? Still smaller gap, but I mean, it's not good enough. We're not happy with that. So how about pseudo bus? You can see that that's going to be a small gap over there, but it's pretty close to what we are looking for. So from now, we're going to make a comparison between the test vehicle and the pseudo bus, which is the, the, the best one that makes sense to us. So we look at the variation of the travel times using the box plot techniques. You can see that the pseudo bus down there had the smallest variation on the travel times better than the, uh, the rest of the bus. That's the test vehicle. So to be statistical significant on the study, we look at the minimum number of run required for this study, whether the data set that we have going to give our, us the cons confidence that whatever we generate from that, we can count on. So we look at the minimum number of runs. You can see here that we have about 15 to 19 number of runs of the bus and the third vehicles. And the minim minimum requirement is 10 bus and 15 test vehicles to make a 95% significance. So we have more than that. But um, on the weekends, as we uh, indicated before, that we have air on the data set, so we're not going to look at the weekend data. So, so I put together the weekday of two days 
to be one data set and make a, a more number of runs to make comparisons. So first we look at the corridor, the whole corridor analysis. We start with the scatter plot of the speed of the test vehicle and the pseudo bus and trying to generate some relationship between those. We can see that the pseudo bus running with the faster speed along the corridor, but the trend line show that those two are going to into the same direction with the parallel trend line. So the mean vehicle speed is twenty the mean corridor vehicle speed is twenty seven point three miles and the mean pseudo bus corridor speed is thirty three point three. So we start to establish the the simple relationship by looking at the mean speed and what's the ratio between the difference between those. So we found that the vehicles running slower by about 0.82, and we can generate the simple equation that the vehicle speed should be 0.82 times the pseudo bus speed, which is the maximum speed. So we generate the same thing for the whole corridor, and we can see that it's about 0.7, 0.8. And then we look at the bridge analysis. Why we look at the bridge? Because long time ago, went back in a couple of years, Ken Turner's with TriMet said that if the bus and the test vehicle going to run at the same characteristic, there's going to be only one place, which is the Ross Iron Bridge. The bridge have no shoulders, have no access, and no bottlenecks. So those can generate the free flow condition for the, all the vehicles that run on the bridge. So we look at the bridge portion, try to prove that. So we, we use the same technique, we plot the scatter uh, speed on the graph. And you can see that the, the pink one represents the pseudo bus, and the, the red one represents the actual bus, and the blue is the uh, test vehicles. So we can see that. Uh, Instead of the bus in red and the test vehicle in blue are closer, we found that the pseudo bus with the maximum speed are close to the vehicle more than the, the actual bus. And we generate the same equation saying that if we look at the maximum speed, the ratio is 0.97. So it's pretty close to one. So from this, we probably can prove that the bus doesn't run at the same speed as the vehicle, but the maximum speed that the bus can achieve are close to what the vehicle are traveling. So we generate the same thing, come up with the equations, the coefficient for the equation for the speed and the travel times. So how good that coefficient that we generate are so we start to do the statistical analysis, looking at the level of confidence on the, on the coefficient that we generate from the mean. So we found that the, the confidence interval at the 90, 95% is between 0.76 and 0.84. So what we have is a 0.82, and it falls into that range. So we can say that it's significant and then we generate for all the eastbound and the westbound corridors and on the bridge. And every, everything represents the 95% confidence. So we done more statistical analysis looking at whether the, the relationship exists using the t distributions. And we also generate the regressions, try to come up with the better constant for the models. And from the reverse regression that we use, we come up with the 0.81 coefficients, which is close to the mean that we have, the, the coefficient that we have from the previous analysis, which is the 0.82. So this one has the 1.6% bias on that. And for the corridors, we come up with that on the eastbound and the westbound. There's a coefficient right there. And the equation can is like vehicle speed equal 0.81 of the maximum speed that the bus can achieve. 
and then we look at the bridge again. You can see the difference between the one that we generate with the mean and the one that with the equations is pretty close. We have the equations. So in the conclusion, so we can prove that it's a possibility to generate the relationship between the test vehicle and the bus. And we can we have the AVL data that very useful and uh, the vehicles for the equation of the vehicle we found that the test vehicle speed was 0.78 in the eastbound direction and 0.81 in the westbound directions. And then the all the time space diagram which is the plot of the trajectory and the 3D speed contour is helpful for us to do the analysis. Well, that's probably like a, the first phase of the study. We look at the morning peaks. So in the future, we are looking for the analysis on the evening peaks. We want to incorporate more detail like the incident. If the incident is going to create the delay on the roadway, how can we def detect that on the system? So far, we have done a linear equations for the for, for this analysis. So we probably look into more non-linear relationship, incorporate more variables that could happen on the roadway, and then expand the study into the different corridors. That's something we're looking for in the future. And I mean, if you, any of you interested on that, you can talk to Rob. He probably have a lot of funding, have a lot of data, so we can further continue on this and then maybe make use of the models for the, our city. So before we go to the questions, I probably want to acknowledge a lot of people hearing on this project. We have Steve, we have Ken Turner from the TriMet that provide a really useful data. We have Jack Merchant from the ODOT that always helps. City of Portland will close. We have a lot of students that I don't want to go into their names that was tortured again into running along the corridors. We want to thank uh, a lot of people from the Center of Urban Studies and then thank my advisor, Dr. Bernanese, um, and several people in the ITS lab that helped me with all the data processing. Any questions? Go ahead. Yes, um, I noticed the vehicle data from the uh, probe had some had some contours in it that looked like. Uh, oh, were you were going to use the microphone. Sorry. I noticed that uh, <laughs> that uh, the, the data from the test vehicle had some some contours in it that looked like it was hitting some traffic peaks. Right. And I didn't really see those on the pseudo bus. Was is there any particular reason? The, yeah, uh, because um, yeah. because the difference be between the two data, I mean, the test vehicle, we have data every three seconds, right? So you can see that the graph show what happened at the street. Sometimes the bus slow down, uh, the vehicle slow down. But when we look at the bus, we have only the location-based data between the two stops. So, when we generate the trajectory line on that, it just, we kind of like look at the errors, what happened between the two locations of stop. We don't have the detail whether it stopped at the traffic or not. Yeah, that probably. But again, I mean, the whole study is like a preliminary study, and what we're really looking for is just try to look at the rough relationship between the bus and the with, between the traffic condition and the bus. So maybe we can generate something from the, the bus travel on the corridors. And from that, I mean, at the travel standpoint, you probably just want to know, is it good or bad to go to that roadway? So we kind of like want the rough number just to see what happened. Go ahead. I have two questions. One is, how did you choose PAL as your test corridor? 
And second, um, wouldn't it make a difference if the arterial had two lanes in each direction versus one lane in each direction as far as how good a probe a bus would be? Because if there's two lanes, then the cars in the left lane can be going faster than the cars in the right lane who are right. behind a bus. Right. But, in, but if there's only one lane, the cars might be going to a similar right. speed as the bus. So the qu first question is why we choose power lower. I mean, it's pretty much at the beginning, we're looking for the straight corridors. And then again, it's a start from the class project that we want to uh, expand the, the experience of the, of the student to the data collection, and kind of those kind of things. So we didn't look into several different options. So we just go straight right to PAL. And I start to develop everything from that. So I kind of don't have more choice. And then, but I mean, again, we were saying that in the f future research, we want to expand it to a different corridor so we can see how different. And the second one, uh, we choose how it have two rain. And the vehicles are travel, we pretty much we tell the driver try to keep on the left lane, keep driving on the same lane as the bus so we can represent the test vehicle that are running at the kind of like close characteristic as the bus. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, sometimes you probably see the uh, the driver going to going on the 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 left lane, which is faster. But again, I mean, because you want to use the you the the bus data, so that's why we try to get the relationship as same as the bus instead of trying to drive on the left lane. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Did you think about having somebody, um, you know, how in the, your test vehicle you had people with equipments mm -hmm. doing the measuring every three minutes, of having somebody actually ride one of the city buses with that equipment and correlating what they find with, for instance, what TriMet records on its system. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe there might be an electronic interference problem, but I was just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was thinking once, but we haven't gone into that details. Um, one thing, well, I, I mean, the whole study, we try to generate something from the, 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 um, the benefit that we have the bus running. So I and we try to do the relationship from what we have right now, which is the bus system that we have. So I mean, of course, if we send someone in the bus and then get that detail of data, we probably can see more um, variables from the bus and then see detail of the behavior of the bus, what happened. But I mean, from now, we just try to generate from what we have, yeah. So, yeah, but it might be in the future, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so from, from what you found to doing the study, um, mm -hmm. would you be able to say that the information, the instantaneous, the real-time information that the, the probe could provide mm -hmm. would allow for reader boards on arterials and things like that, so it would be real-time information Right. Is, is that kind of the, the goal of, of yeah. this? Pretty much we were talking about how we can get that, um, that bus data in real time. Um, because the data that we use right now is archive data, that we're going to get the data at the end of the day. But we were talking like um, if it will happen, if the climate can um, send the data to the control centers. I mean, they already have the communication system on the bus or every bus, and the data is just a, a small line of numbers. So it's possible they were looking into that because one motivation on this is the TriMet, City of Portland, and ODOT trying to make use of the bus data in um, report the traffic in real time. That's what. That's one of the motivations. So eventually they probably do that, but they will look into the detail how they're going to get the data, how to communicate between those. Go ahead. 
uh, this idea might be way out there, even past your study and past our lives. But what I was thinking was interesting about uh, your data, and Michael's talking about reader boards or something that. But in future cars come out, they might have a reader board in the in the car that you get in your car in the morning, you push the button, and it says, "Oh, pals backed up, alternative routes, division, Holgate." Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you think that um, there's uh, room for s doing uh, studies where these modern cars that come out with these in in onboard systems that uh, not just buses are act as probes, but cars act as probes mm -hmm. that people could. Uh, yeah, lots of, we'd um, have so much data coming from lots of cars as well as buses. I mean, eventually I think it will happen, of course. I mean, you, you probably see a lot of um, in the news or from the research that thing that when you turn on your cell phone, you have the traffic report come up. So it's possible that it's going to happen. I mean, so far they, I mean, they don't even have this available for the travel on the web or anything. All we know is like they have the traffic cameras, but eventually I think the that uh, Portland freeway map is going to be available for the public, and then later on I think we're going to move toward that. I mean, GPS in every car, it could happen. So they don't even in the future they don't even use the bus. I I don't know. Maybe every car can report the traffic too the control centers. Yeah. It it could happen. Any go ahead, Mike. Um, you showed the the highway speed map that, that ODOT currently uses and I know for them to generate those speeds on the freeways it's generally simpler than the process you used to do on the arterials. You have a loop detector, install some standard software and you can get highway speeds. It's pretty easy to right. do. Um, in this case it looks like for each arterial or each piece of arterial you're going to have to do some sort of individual study to figure out the correct coefficient to use to get the accurate speed. So if a municipality was going to install a system like this, it seems like there would be a very large upfront cost in doing the research and calibrating this thing properly. Um, do you plan on doing more work in the future and figuring out a way to make this easier or streamline this process or suggestions you have to maybe make it simpler to make something like this easier to implement? Mm. Good question. Um, so yeah, I probably forget to say that. I mean, in each arterial, s several things like a number of stop, number of uh, signal intersections. Um, that's all the characteristic of the the arterial add up to be a complicated system. So I mean, what happened at Power Boulevard might not reflect the 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 thing that happened on Burnside, for example. So. That's why we were looking for different corridors and see if we can come up with something. But again, I mean, from your standpoint for the travelers, you probably don't, don't want to know exactly what is the condition on the arterials. Like, is that go 35 miles per hour or does it go 32 miles per hour? What you want to know is that if, whether it's slow, fast, or stuck, those kind of things. So, I mean, from... I think from the agency standpoint right now, they try to generate something that can roughly estimate what happened in the field right now. So I mean, might or might not that number 0.81 can apply throughout the whole um, Portland city, city of Portland. But, um, but I mean, yeah, if we can go into the detail of the other corridors and then start to do the same thing, we probably can see something, we probably can see the relationship of the different corridor or two other metro, metro areas. Does that make sense? Go ahead. Well, you have to bear with me because I was pretty f unfamiliar with kind of what you did, but can you explain again the pseudo bus versus the test vehicle and then just a regular bus? That's one question. And the second question is, I guess with your 95% confidence interval, is the, f the air, potential air have to do somewhat with um, probably potential miscalculations with the data, but also with human error? Or, I mean, some the differences with someone taking longer to stop and some drivers driving faster and how that was, like, factored into it? Mm, good. First question, the pseudo bus is 
um, between two stop, we have the bus running. Sometimes accelerate, sometimes decelerate, right? But the maximum speed along that corridor will record in the system, and that's the maximum numbers, maximum speed number that we were talking. So we we use that number to generate the conceptual bus that run between those two points with that speed. Yeah, that's a pseudo bus. And then we have test vehicles, and then the bus. And what is your question again? I'm sorry. The like, one? No, I mean the first one is that. Um, the test vehicle, mm -hmm. and then the pseudo bus, and then what was the other use? The, the hypothetical bus? Yeah. Hypothetical bus is just the same when you look at the trajectory. I don't know if I still have it here, but. Let's see, we can go into that. So it's a bus, the regular bus that we, but we take out the, the time that the bus spin at the bus stop. So let, we try to make the bus running without stop like a vehicles and see if we can make any relationship from that. Yeah, you, you can see that. That's a bus with the stop. Right, and then we take out that horizontal distance, and then shift the line over so it becomes that line, and that hypothetical bus. And then the modified pseudo bus, we have the horizontal segment right there, which that is the passenger activity at the stop. We kind of like add it back to see whether which one is ma making more sense. Okay. And from the statistical analysis. I mean, throughout the, the whole study, we kind of like have a small data set. And then what the intention, again, like I said, we try to generate something rough that can be used of. So the equation, the regression equation, we already account for some air that we don't have the variable for. So, and then try to generate from the rough number that we have, and then come up with the coefficients. So the, those all those ads that I probably don't know what happened in the fields, whether they run faster, or the the bus data that have the errors. But we, I mean, from the from the beginning of the the analysis, we try to take all the the air out, like the run that doesn't make sense. We, try to take it out, so, and then what we have left, we generate from that. So, of course, going to be some error from those variables that we didn't account for in the study. But again, yeah, it's a kind of preliminary study. We probably look into, like, more details in the future, because the behavior of the bus, the number of the, the passenger can affect all the analysis, right? And going to be the, the time that the door opens, um, the use of the lift, now, mm, those kind of things. So if in the future, we, we, if we incorporate those, so we probably get the better uh, models that can predict exact numbers with the 95% uh, confidence. Yeah, on that data set right there, um, between 1 and 1.5 miles, the pseudobus slopes up steadily, but the uh, but there's a, a significant curve with the uh, normal test vehicle. Um, where what what point on the um, <clears throat> on the road was that to explain that particular? So this one is a, this one is eastbound is a in town. Oh, westbound is a in town. So we can see that the Rosh Island Bridge is at the end of the corridors. So that's area 1.5 mile from the 39th Avenue, not uh, southeast 39. So, and your question is, what corridor is that? Is that what you say? Right, yeah, because the, the fact that you have a significantly different slope on one part of that uh, segment from the other part of that segment uh, yeah. seems to indicate that perhaps that uh, that there's something going on in that segment of uh, of of traffic, and it may, mm -hmm. might 
not huh? be that indicative of uh, the normal traffic pattern? Mm. Actually, uh, I probably need to go back to the previous one. You can see that that's the vehicle, the red vehicle, the red line. It happened like a three or four minutes after the bus trip, right? So, I mean, every minute the traffic condition on the arterial chains. So sometimes the bus run into the, uh, the bus can go all the way through the corridors, but the, the vehicle might stuck at the traffic light, that kind of thing. So several different things that could happen at the arterials. So that's why the condition might, might not be the same, except we can run along the bus. Right. So you can get everything as the bus have. And again, then you cannot make a comparison between the traffic condition and the bus running conditions because you are trying to replicate the bus behavior, not the traffic behavior. Is that Go ahead. Just go forward to the slide you had before. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, forward. Um, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, what, probably this one. Um, where that red line was all the way. Yeah. I s or one more over. I assume the um, those dots are are travel time um, the measurements that like points stops where they, the yeah. TriMet measures the mm -hmm. time. I wouldn't doubt if that red line that goes to the left there is the point on Powell Boulevard which goes underneath the railroad tracks. It's kind of like an interstate <laughs> it's uh, type atmosphere because the, the real, the real cars go really fast in that section. Um, you mean this period? This yeah, area? that, really, um, that actually, car right there. Hmm. That's know, that's, that helps answer what the gentleman was asking is why is there that differential there? Or you go if you went in and found out some of the variables uh, for that part of the street, just like the, the upper section is the bridge section, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so there, it's straight. Yeah. There's no stops, and it's everybody's the same speed. Right. That lower area where the Powell Boulevard dips underneath, uh, if you, you look at it as a variable, that's the travel behavior of automobiles. When they get to that spot, they they floor it and they fly under right, there real quick. Or a bus, and a pseudo bus would go the speed limit where automobiles don't, even test vehicles. Yeah, that that probably, that's a good point. I mean, yeah, and again, like along this period of the corridors, we have so many signal light intersections. But um, after when we pass that peri uh, that area, I believe there's going to be a straight corridors throughout the, uh, to the bridge, and that yeah, people tend to go faster. And I mean, each trip of the vehicle, you're going to see different things because. Human air, I guess. Yeah. Any additional questions? Yeah. Ask something. Understand anything? <laughs> you get anything? <laughs>